All right, here we go with our very first air radio show. Air radio, radio news. Air radio news. Today's news brought to you by our good friends at the Appalachian Worldwide. We're going to bring a worldwide, Canadian-wide at least to start off yeah. anyway. Well, you got to remember our local show is, is, is done right here. Done right here, and uh, we're, we're basing this... On, on our local show, but it's a Canadian show. It's, it's, it's and, a little uh, more Canadian involved. Yeah, a little I guess bit more fun to, related yeah. to. Uh, uh, we're not going to get gonna, into the COVID we're gonna try so much. Anyway. <laughs> we're going to try. We're, we're going to try. try. Uh, uh, and that's the Appalachian Drink House here in Halton Hills, Ontario. You can check them out online. They've got a great Facebook page, and uh, you can also call them at 905 877 9888, and they're at 68 Main Street North in Georgetown, Ontario. Halton Hills, Ontario, Canada's hometown, the yep. home of two national radio stations, FM 108.ca. Uh, of course, we play 50s, 60s, and 70s music. And uh, 24-7, um, radio the way it used to be. Uh, we Very have so. Canadian news, weather, sports every hour. Uh, it's kind of like Radio Canada International and 1050 Chum all rolled into one. Something like that. And yeah. uh, so if you want to know what's going on in Canada uh, with the weather, with the, with your sports information, everyday stuff, with all the, without all the clog of, of commercials, uh, listen to us. Radio GTA, is uh, we play uh, uh, the newer music and uh, the best of, of yesterday and today. A lot of Canadian, a lot of... Um, and we'll get into that as we get through yeah. the show. Uh, with our music uh, section. Big Daddy, Russ Horton, myself, Lee Lakin, Lee Eliawood behind the camera. And of course, like I say, we're on location at the Appalachian Drink House in Georgetown, Ontario, Canada, bringing you uh, your top stories from this week. Lucy in, in Goosey. Lucy Goosey. Very Lucy Goosey. We, uh, we love using that term. And uh, We're wearing our Acton dinner jackets, yeah. of course, uh, yeah. because we are Canada's hometown. And if you want to pick one up, uh, get we'll, us through our Facebook page. That's right. That's right. The big news, I guess, the provinces and territories are considering uh, mandated vaccinations. Yes. Um, that's all in the in the days to come, I'm sure. <gasps> Very I'm shocked. I'm shocked too. Um, well, we're all sick of this. Yeah. Stuff. Um, Sidney Poitier. He died 95 years old. Of course, one of my Fantastic favorite guy. actors. Lost a couple good ones this week. Yeah, Betty White, of course, who we'll yeah. talk about later. But Sidney was um, was 95. Um, he was uh, the first black actor to win an Oscar. Right. And I fell in love with Lulu when I was eight years old in 1968. It just served with love. But of course, uh, we were talking about all the movies that he made. Um, Guess who's coming to dinner? Um, and my favorite, The Heat of the Night. Yeah. Uh, he was just amazing. They call me Mr. Tibbs. And an uh, amazing guy. Um, so that's the, the big news right now at the moment. Uh, now, Ontario has posted sweeping new restrictions that will see schools shut down. Of course, to in-person learning until at least January the 17th. With the in-Ontario ban on dining, gyms shut down. Capacity limits, that's across the country. Manitoba, same thing. Right. Um, the provinces are falling into... And, and they're also having problems in Nunavut now, in the north, and the uh, some of the uh, the remote communities where they're closing them down completely. Well, this Omicron variant is much more transmissible, so this is becoming, the, the, you know, the big talk of everybody is, how come the numbers are going up? Well, this one is that much more transmissible, so... I've, I've heard different things, like it's a bad cold uh, now Pretty much. Uh, compared to the yeah. other one, but it knocks knocks the shit out of you, yeah. uh, basically. And uh, It's a bad, it's, it's the flu. Yeah. You've got the flu and you're down and, you know, and... Uh, but it's affecting businesses again. Well, it's um, them. All of it's us. affecting hospitals and, you know, ICU units and stuff like that as well. So, you know, it's across, uh, you know... But this is uh, where my story falls into it. Hospitals are warning of a possible disturbing new trend in hospitalizations among infants. Doctors are asking parents to be vigilant when monitoring for COVID-19 symptoms in children and to get vaccinated if you're pregnant. Dr. Nadira Alam, a family doctor and anesthesiast from Halton Hills, Ontario, told national news media on Thursday that with the Omicron variant of COVID-19 is prevent as it as it is, and far more transmissible than the Delta variant, more people will get sick in some more than others. Um, so yeah, I think everybody reacts differently to it. Too, I, think I think more people well. are getting sick with this one. This is a well, like, again, they're saying that it's, it's you know it's transferable through touch and not just masks, but so they're reminding people: wash your hands plenty, sanitize. 
But people know. are getting pissed, and as in Montreal, uh, the police, they state 57 yeah. people. Right. 57 people were ticketed uh, province-wide on the curfew on Saturday night. What a what a time to put a curfew on somebody, New Year's Eve. Yeah. Um, a few dozen people got together in downtown Montreal uh, to oppose the return of the curfew, which came into being from 10 a.m. to 5 a.m., or 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. on New Year's Eve. Uh, Premier, uh, Premier Francois Lejeu uh, stated the measure of news conference in Montreal. It's an effort to slow down the spread of Omicron, but they're locking them down tight in Quebec. Right. Yeah, and, they, are. Uh, they are not. The people of Quebec are not happy about it. Well, like you say, uh, too, uh, you've got uh, 57 people getting charged. That's probably all they could manage. They, they probably would have charged more I'm sure there if they'd more. had more cops on. And yeah. You know what I mean? It would have been uh, very well, it, it's It's amazing that, uh, you know, I mean... How can you go out New Year's Eve and have to go home at 10 o'clock like they did yeah, in Ontario? You know what? It was funny. I was watching some people uh, posting on the weekend. And, uh, you know, how did you make it till midnight? And people were like, no, I got till about 10 o'clock. As we get older, we're not too worried about making it to midnight Isn't anymore. Funny? Isn't it funny how the things uh, we were... Um, we were yelled at uh, about and uh, things we hated to do when we were kids. Now we quite enjoy when we're older. Yeah. You know, go to your nap. room. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll go to my room. I'll go to my room. Uh, no problem. Can I have a nap while I'm there? Uh, you know. Um, but the things that uh, you're grounded for a week. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, thank God. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm COVID ready. I've got my couch and my my pillow and my uh, uh, whatever else. Yeah. And uh, and my TV and. Uh, but uh, please don't take the sports away from us again. Well, this That's is all yeah, I have to say. You know, losing the uh, the World Juniors and, and the way they canceled that whole thing just. Did you hear me about the right Russian out. players on the plane? No, they were, they were very unruly and uh, and causing some problems. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. hear about that. No. I think they were a little upset about getting sent uh, home. Well, yeah. you know, I mean, holy cow! Well, you think about what the parents must have outlaid to travel and hotels yeah. and flights and. Mm. That's a lot of money that, you know, that's coming out of their pockets. It's gone. You know, the kids are, were sent from Russia to Western Canada. Yeah. They were sent from Austria. They were sent yeah. from Germany. Exactly. Uh, who do you think paid for that? Yeah. You know, and then somebody decides, oh, no. We're, we're, oh, they just boomed. That's it. You know, and stop it, the and games. It'll, and it'll be curious. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk a bit about sports in a few minutes, but... You know, it'll be curious to uh, to see because we're starting to see a bunch of NHL teams getting COVID protocols. So yeah, it's interesting to see what they're what they're going to do with all that. Whether they're going to go back into the Canadian bubble yeah. and the U.S. bubble like they did last year. That gets a little boring after a while, but it's it hockey. It it's gets, hockey. It's at least you know, it's something. Yeah. I don't want to see Ottawa nine times a year. I no. want to see Boston. I want to see uh, you know, Florida. Rangers. Uh, you know. right. <laughs> uh, but uh, if we have to do it, we will. And when you watch the highlights, um, uh, people in the stands in Canada, there's nobody there. Yeah. And you see a Boston game, and they're all there eating hot dogs yeah, and masks. And, oh. It's like, uh, you know, especially in Florida, it's the worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they don't they're, care. They're full. They don't care. The stands are full. Okay, you yeah, know, big deal. Um, I guess uh, at this time in the pandemic with widespread new restrictions and postponed surgeries for tens of thousands, Canadians are actually angry with those uh, who aren't vaccinated. This is according to our fearless leader, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who mentioned this on Wednesday. Uh, people are seeing cancer treatments and elective surgeries put off because beds are filled with people who chose not to get vaccinated. Uh, and they're frustrated, of course, you can imagine, when people see that uh, we're in lockdowns or serious public health restrictions right now because of uh, the risk posed to all of us by unvaccinated people. People get angry. And uh, oh yeah, for the first time, I, I agree guess. with the Prime Minister there. Yeah, people are angry. Yeah. Uh, but then again, you know, uh, I can I, see both I, sides I, of the story. You know what? It's funny that more... <laughs> The more we talk to people and the more we get out and, and, and do our thing for, you know, what we do, uh, I hear more people upset about lockdown, I hear more people upset about, than I do about the hospitals at this yeah. point. The only ones I hear bitching about the hospitals is the government. Mm -hmm. So it's funny to, you know, where he's getting his his uh, his input from, you know, is, is, are they actually going out and talking to Canadians and saying, what what's upsetting you through this pandemic the most? 
I guarantee you that isn't one of them. No. That is not on the top of the list. If you did the family feud, and, you know, yeah. top eight answers on the board, well, I can guarantee you that <laughs> one's not on the board. So uh, this one, this is this story here. I love this story, and it's about time we start to see our Canadian government do this. And I couldn't care less what party was in power. They need to get on top of this. They put forth its $40 billion agreement in principle to give compensation to the First Nations children and their families harmed by the underfunded child welfare system and establish a long-term reform. Ottawa will provide $20 billion to children on reserve in the Yukon who were unnecessarily removed from their homes between April 1st, 1991 and March 31st, 2020. This includes their parents and caregivers. Compensation will also be given to those impacted by the narrow definition of Jordan's principle between December 12, uh, 12 2007 and uh, November 2nd, 2017. That's the most important story of the year, right there. Really, I think so. You know, it's about uh, these, the, the government's got to start stepping up, doing this stuff for the Indigenous. You know, next is let's start getting them fresh water, getting them better, you know, living uh, uh, resources up there. You know, you look at some of these homes these people are living in, it's disastrous to see that they're living like this. So uh, if we can get the government to start moving its tail on that one. You can never say you're sorry enough. No. No, ever, you, you ever. Could, nothing, uh, nothing could prove no. wrong. <laughs> I agree. Now, the Ontario government, uh, as mentioned, it will broaden the use of rapid COVID-19 antigen tests as the Provincial Diagnostic Testing Network is looking at sustained pressure under the spread of the Omicron uh, variant. That's the same across the country, too, basically. I think so. All the provinces are falling into line and doing the same thing. Right. Uh, so when we mention Ontario, it's probably the same in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, or across the country. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, we, 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 this is not a show about COVID. It's a show about Canada. And uh, we're not going to dwell on the COVID subjects. No, no we're not and, really. Uh, uh, this story this here, story here this, is a good one. This story here, uh, we had, uh, it's been international, I think. It's gone worldwide. Uh, the judge has dismissed the lawsuit filed against surviving members of Nirvana over an album cover, the iconic album cover, Nevermind, with the yeah. baby on it. Last year, Spencer Eldon, the baby uh, pictured naked in the front of the album, sued a number of the individuals and companies tied in with the record, including Nirvana band members Dave Grohl, Chris uh, Novoselic, as well as Kurt Cobain's widow, Courtney Love, who's the executor of uh, Kurt Cobain's estate. Uh, Eldon's lawsuit claimed the image of the cover was taken and used without his consent, and the nudity amounts to an image of child abuse. Absolutely uh, talk, ridiculous. Talk about over the top. Just blow me away. Here's a guy that wants to make some bucks. His mother, they show documents of his mother signing the waiver to, to uh, use his body on, and at that time, she is the one to give permission. He's a baby. He's so. a baby. Um, you know, to, to go to that extreme and then throw the, the child abuse in there, talk about really just... I so, love that album and, you oh, know, it's, it's, put, a, it's put a damper on the whole thing with the album. Uh, you I mean, know, what, I'm glad a judge did do that though, because if it had gone the other way, I would have been really ticked off. I would have been that. pissed. I would have been uh, pissed uh, off. Uh, it was, you know, uh, you know, I mean, it's such a... Uh, and it's a slap in the face to Kirk and all that he stood for yeah. in music, yeah. really, yeah. by some little you know, jerk off who wants to make some money. You know, he was actually, the family was paid quite a substantial amount of money uh, for that photo, but the parents ended up pissing it away. Yeah, well, of course. So he wants more money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Let's just move on. Yeah. And, uh, you but know, I mean. He lost, so there. <laughs> I, I, I can't even, you know, I, I couldn't imagine that. When that story came up, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And uh, when I, uh, that's an iconic album cover. That's like Crime of the Century, uh, Dark Hotel Side of the California. Moon, Hotel California. It's one of the classic. Rolling and I Stone, never Sticky for, Fingers. For a moment about child abuse. Yeah. His <laughs> Winkle is there. Yeah. We all have Winkles. Well, half of us do. But, you know, get over it, people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Trying to make money on, on, uh, on rock bands. Uh, you know, or, or trying to make money that way is just disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, do you know what the most popular province is for U-Haul, where people are going? I've heard. Alberta. 
apparently. Uh, Alberta posted it's like uh, minus fifty there. Right I know. Now. Why the hell would you want to do that? <laughs> minus fifty. You're going the wrong way, people. <laughs> Alberta posted more one-way U-Haul truck customers than any other province, followed closely by British Columbia and Ontario, according to the company's collection of migration trends for the year. Apparently, they do it every year. Right. And Alberta usually wins. Wow. Well, Alberta's probably the the fastest growing. Uh, you know, I, I've been there in the summertime too. It's beautiful. It's quite nice. You know, oh, yeah, it's got, breathtaking uh, scenery. Yeah, I mean, you've got uh, Banff and all of that out there. But you know, it's freaking cold, man. Cold <laughs> like in the wintertime. And bad hockey in Edmonton, which we'll get to later. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, this story here, I, I I hadn't even heard about this story. Oh, well, uh, excuse me. A woman who has sued Britain's Prince Andrew for sexual abuse uh, agreed in a 2009 civil settlement with uh, the late Jeffrey Epstein to restrictions on her ability to sue others, uh, language that could potentially impact whether or not the lawsuit against the prince goes ahead or not because she's got a, basically like a gag order. She can't sue anybody, go after anybody. And the settlement was posted Monday as part of the Virginia Guffrey's 2021 civil lawsuit against Prince Andrew whom she accuses of forcing her to have sex 20 years ago when she was just 17. Andrew was denied uh, the ac- uh, her Prince Andrew has denied the accusations mentioned Guffrey's 2009 deal with Epstein shields him from any liability. Um, that just sounds really fishy to me. Yeah, he's uh, sounds kind of um, scummy, doesn't it? Is there a bit of scum? I think he's a little that? bit worried about all this stuff going on here. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, I was always raised when I was a kid to, I love the queen. I mean, she's she's like my sister. I mean, yeah. just want to go up and give her a hug. Uh, but when it comes to some of the rest of the royals, get a life. Oh, God. Like, uh, come Fergie, on. Uh, some of the stuff Fergie went through. And, yeah. You know, some of the, all, this, all of them. I mean, the, the queen cannot be amused at all this stuff. No. <laughs> it's and, kind, of, uh, kind of depressing. Uh, she's gone through a lot of stuff this year, too, losing her husband and... Uh, now this with uh, you know Randy Andy, uh, which we used to call him yeah. back in the Actually, in the you're, eighties. You're right, that yeah. was the name, that Randy is, Andy. Yes, I remember that. Um, uh, hopefully he's he's um, he's um, he's not done anything wrong, uh, but you, you know the finger is pointing at him. But uh, and when you uh, see the whole thing that it's attached to the Epstein situation, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you see what happened with uh, Max, uh, the, the wife. Uh, you know, uh, and that whole story just seems very shady, very scummy. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I get the creeps by that story. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. it's a good way of putting it. Uh, the United States, uh, getting back to COVID before we get out of the news here, uh, one million new coronavirus infections reported last Monday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, just keep, they just keep right along eating their hot dogs, yeah. watching those Columbus Blue Jackets. <laughs> Hey, yeah. you know, um, I'm just Watching amazed. The Green Bay that, uh, Packers play yeah, football. Yeah, yeah, they're my team, and they're going to win the Super Bowl. Ah, we'll get to that. Uh, I guess we'll look at some of the sports. Uh, uh, yeah, well, well, you I got one more story. Well, I got a couple actually. There you go. Uh, ahead. These, right. these two are actually kind of interesting. Of course, we're talking about Betty White. You know, passed oh, away at 99 course. years yeah. old, three weeks or, or two weeks before her birthday. Um, you know, she had uh, left. A, a hell of an impression on many of her colleagues in showbiz. Messages of condolences and thanks, as well as personal anecdotes from those in the entertainment industry, poured in on social media shortly after the news of the passing of the death of the 99-year-old. She'll always be remembered as, a, as an icon, along with um, uh, Sidney Poitier as well. You know, they, they uh, just two classic cinema greats. You know, legends. Like, the interesting thing was, Us Magazine, they obviously put their their uh, New Year's picture out and get it all ready before the New Year, and it had a picture of Betty White on the front saying, Happy 100th, you made it. Or, that's sad. Man, uh, oh man, yeah. That, that's, it's, it's there's too not too good. many people that die who are famous. You know, I mean, you're sorry they're, they're, they die, but they, they really affect you. But when I heard that Betty died, my heart sank. She was such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person, and what a personality oh, she God, was. Funny yeah. as hell. Yeah. Oh, funny as hell. Absolutely. You see her with Carson in the caveman scene. Oh, you know. I mean, the stuff like that. You just can't even even uh, they were showing that. some of the scenes that she had appeared on the Carol Burnett show. Yeah. With Carol Burnett. Yeah. 
Oh my God, just yeah. priceless. So. What was it she said about uh, being uncomfortable? Men were, were complaining about being uncomfortable and she said, you guys got it easy. You want to try wearing a bra in August. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Uh, just a funny lady and such a sweetheart. And, uh, yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure they're getting up there, uh, getting uh, together up there. Uh, what a what a, be a big party! What a what a party in heaven of two major superstars. Um, um, this last story here, I've got uh, funny. I, in a way, I, people might not agree. Oh, with here me. we go. Yeah. Uh, you may not agree with me on this one, and, and like we talked about, the, you know, the media has just absolutely blown this completely out of proportion. Uh, experts now note that the, the notorious Sunwing party flight from Montreal to Mexico might have been stopped mid-trip had certain aviation protocols had been strictly followed. Videos of the December 30th charter voyage posted on social media showed unmasked passengers close to each other singing, dancing in the aisles and on the seats as some of the clutch bottles of liquor, vape and snap selfies. Doing a normal thing that they would do normally on the party end. Uh, the head of McGill University Aviation Management Operation Program, John Gradick, mentions that the captain has responsibility for the plane, including the decision to turn around or touch down early because of unruly behavior or other breaches by passengers. Well, obviously, the captain didn't see any of that. Okay, they weren't. They they made a mistake by doing that, but 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 really, uh, do we need to have that on the front of the news? Constantly. There's more important yeah. things to talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, we have uh, a problem with our indigenous children, uh, with our indigenous population. We have a problem with COVID. Do we have to talk about this garbage? Oh God! I no, mean, I really don't care. Okay, they screwed up. They they, they screwed up. Yeah, they, 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 they weren't supposed to do that. Uh, what they did, but they did. And uh, of course, but if you're gonna if you're gonna sensationalize something like that, then why not sensationalize when? Our premiers or some of our MPs went on trips last Christmas when we were in total lockdown. Nobody could go anywhere, but you don't hear about those stories. They get swept under the rug, and this gets this gets to be the one where they make an example out of them, and that's what I don't I don't agree. It's with bad now. enough hearing all the, the COVID, uh, all of the COVID stuff, uh, but uh, uh, but uh, you know let's let's get away from this this. Uh, Extra Shaming. stuff Shaming. that we have to hear, yeah, about COVID. You know, I mean, it's garbage. Yeah. Um, you know, and almost shaming people, yeah. you know, in a way. Let's get into the sports. Uh, the Leafs have been doing well. <laughs> yeah, great uh, so far. I've had a couple postponements, obviously, because some teams are in protocol, like Montreal. So. Yeah. Jack Campbell, uh, he oh. grabbed himself a uh, shutout there the other night uh, against the Ottawa Senators. Soup. And soup. Soupy. Soup, yeah, I love soup. I love that uh, game. Hey, we got him from the Kings, eh? Yeah, I know. Eh? And I always liked him when he was with the Kings. You know, he just didn't get to play a lot. Yeah. I think that was a big problem. Is once he's now that he's playing all the time, you see him improving almost every game. The Leafs are playing very well. I must yeah. admit, um, we we well Edmonton is has gone for a shit. So is Montreal. Yeah. Um, and Connor's on uh, COVID uh, protocol, uh, I believe. Is yeah, he not Connor yeah, McDavid? Yeah. I'm really surprised at the fact that the Oilers have gone for shit, really, because they've got a great team on paper. The goaltending's um, killing them. Yeah, and uh, but uh, Winnipeg, they, they got embarrassed in Colorado on uh, on Thursday, seven to one. Uh, and but Vancouver have turned things around. Yeah, they have actually. They've been Bruce uh, Boudreaux is their new coach. Yeah, like eight and one with him. Yeah, or nine. Yeah, and he's one been something. with them for what? Just not quite a month yet. And what a turnaround, man! Now when he took over the Canucks, they were in the shit. Yeah, oh, big time. And um, they were great there with Montreal. I thought. Montreal, I, I, especially with their with their, uh, they don't have anyone left to play. No. no. Um, Montreal. Well, Montreal's a very young team. Yeah. They're a very young team. They, you know, they've got, what, two, three veterans, I think, other than that. And, of course, we had the Winter Classic, which uh, was the Minnesota oh, uh, Wild Minnesota. in St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great game. That, that was cool. It was yeah. cold there, eh? D minus 21 Celsius they're playing oh, out there. It's like pond hockey in Saskatchewan, oh, my son. You. <laughs> in Alberta. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but they're... And, but the funny thing was, this, uh, the Blues arrived with shorts and flip flops. Yeah, they showed uh, I know. Just, just to lighten the mood and everything. I love those games out. I do too. Hockey. I wish they'd do 
one in Canada, one in the States each year. I We've got another one for Buffalo and Toronto coming up in Hamilton is in there? February. Oh, is there? Oh, okay, cool. So uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be cool. That'll be cool. And of I'd course, to go to that. the Raptors are, are actually doing well. Um, they've won like three or four in a row. I saw that today um, on TSN. Uh, and Fred Van Vliet, he was a kind of a mediocre player when he came to the Raptors, but oh, man, God, has he taken he's, off. He's really turned around. He's, well, he's turned into be a great uh, ambassador, too, for the team. Everyone well. left, and they said, you know, Freddie... You got to take the you got to take the bull by the horns. Yeah, you got some shoes and, to fill. And uh, you know, I mean, Kyle Lowry, uh, you remember him? Oh God, yeah. he's playing uh, in in uh, Miami now right. and doing very well. And uh, DeRozan is in uh, Chicago. Yeah. He he had two buzzer beaters for the Bulls last week, two in a row. Right. At the end, there it is. That's what they um, pay him the big bucks for. Though, I right? still cheer for Kyle and uh, DeRozan. Um, because they're former Raptors. And, yeah, uh, they were part of the uh, you know championship team too as well. Obviously, the Raptors aren't going to do. Uh, I don't even know if we're going to make the playoffs this year. But uh, you know, don't forget what we did a few years ago. We won the whole. And again, thing. we got to watch what's going on with all that because you got protocols in place for you know the COVID. And uh, who knows, you could have to postpone a few games and it could change how the whole dynamic of the playoffs rolls into, you know? Mm -hmm. The big teams uh, in the NHL right now to watch as well are Pittsburgh, who went 10 in a row. Hold it, jump. And uh, uh, also the Nashville Predators are playing well. Florida Panthers are a surprise this year. Boston's gone down the shitter. I, yeah, um, surprisingly. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, they're the big teams at the moment. Vegas, of course, out west, big team. Um, and you have Minnesota there as well. Those cold moments kill me. I can't stand it. I them. can't stand it, man. When, what, is with, with, what is with the Flash Gordon helmets when <laughs> Vegas play at home? What is that? God. You know, oh. and those green uniforms that the Dallas Stars uh, oh. wear, those yeah. lime green things make my mouth water for some reason. And I, I want to get away. And the know? referees must be just shaking their heads. I often wondered, you know, when they play the Philadelphia Flyers, those orange and black sweaters, don't they just kind of blind you? Yeah. Isn't that an advantage for the yeah. Flyers, their jerseys? Um, like the old L.A. Kings purple things. The purple Remember ones, yeah. Had to be, had to be the worst. Uh, but uh, or, or even the Vancouver Canucks when they had the, oh, the big remember, stripes uh, going up here, the black and dumb, orange and red and yellow. Dumb, and dumb. You know what the best? What's the best NHL sweater? Come on, guys. Come on, it's easy. I have to say the, the Habs. Chicago, man. The Blackhawks. Do you know why Just, I say the Habs though? Why? Because I had somebody in the U.S. when we were watching a hockey game in a bar. And the guy said to me, he says, what does the CH stand for on the front of the jersey? Here we go. And I say to him, you know, it means center heist. Center heist. It looks like the, a toilet seat from the top, the, too. The, the guy actually believed me yeah. and started telling the guy next to him that's what it meant. <laughs> so they got all these guys in the States thinking, oh, it means center heist. Center heist. Do you remember that? you said to him, Canadian habitant. The guy look at you like, again, you're speaking a foreign language. So. When you talk about hockey and, uh, and hockey movies, uh, the people in the United States uh, didn't watch Slapshot with Paul Newman. But it's the number one of the top movies ever to yep. be watched in Canada. Yeah. It stars Paul Newman, and they had a goalie. Remember the French goalie? You go to the box, you feel shame. Um, he was based on Rogie Vash on the old that's right. L.A. Kings goalie. Yeah. And I, I heard that from Bruce Barker, so I know it's true. Yeah. Um, but that's a sh uh, if you haven't seen Slapshot and you're a hockey fan, go rent it. Oh, God, yeah. I guarantee you, you'll watch it a few times. Go rent and, uh, it? Go yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I say that? <laughs> She always, uh, she always cuts me up because I'm such an old fart. Okay, you can, uh, yeah. Go download. Well, that's much older than I. Am. I go download. Know, go yeah. download it. Go download it. Okay, and uh, <laughs> go to Blockbuster. <laughs> it's not there anymore, <laughs> Big Daddy. Uh, I think my the only thing you can rent there are bow chicka bow bow. So. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and of course, the NFL's coming up. Uh, lots of, lots of uh, playoff. Uh, 
stuff going on. Green Bay, probably I, I love watching the whole thing. Green Bay when it's snowing and it's like a, a you know quarterfinal game or semifinal game because it just it's such an intense. I know. love watching the teams like Atlanta coming into Buffalo when there's a snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. the Dolphins. Here come the Dolphins in their uh, in their flip flops. You know, from Miami on yeah. the beach and it's 40 below zero. See, hockey players at least are used to it, but football players uh, uh, not so yeah. much. It's, but uh, I'm looking for the NFL. You have to say Tampa Bay's got a shot again. Um, uh, the Packers, I would say, they were the two teams to watch, uh, basically. Um, but anything can happen. Dallas is in there, too. Yeah. And I love my football. And I love my sports. And, of course, on, on the Air Radio Network, we, we, we let you know every day on our radio stations on and on Facebook. Not, not only are we are radio, we are social media. We are You, you get the news, and it's posted there. Every morning we have a newsroom. We write everything for you. We rewrite. We do not copy what other networks do. What we do at Air Radio is bring you Canada every day in radio and on social media and in video and uh, in a very loosey-goosey style with our Acton dinner jackets. We're Canadian. We're proud of it. Might even be um, in our underwear. We're not. That's right. We're not CTV. We're not CBC. Um, they are very professional. There's nothing wrong with what I they do. Not it's Lloyd wonderful. Sorry, I am I might not. sound like him. But uh, you know. Um, but uh, we're just regular guys talking about our country and radio and music and uh, and, you, and you can check out all of our stations anywhere in the world, of course, because they're online, like yeah. FM108.ca. We're Canada's oldest station, 50s, 60s, 70s. You know, they got great specialty shows on the weekends. One, of course, air radio news, weather, sports. Uh, you know, every hour, and we promote Canadian tourism all the time on that station, along with RadioGTA.ca. You want a different kind of mix, kind of like a CHFI to uh, Mix 99.9 to Q107. And we play know? country. We, uh, yeah. Radio GTA Indeed. play. That's right. Radio GTA uh, covers the music spectrum the way Top 40 Radio used to do in the 60s and 70s, right. where they'll play country. We will play country. We'll play rock. We will play pop. We will play indie. Uh, a lot of Canadian stuff. Now, I mention this because we have uh, the Canadian uh, country countdown, the indie country countdown. Every Saturday morning on Radio GTA, we count down from number 100 to number one. These are indie Canadian country right. music yep. artists only. Yep. They are people that are wonderful musicians, wonderful songs that don't get played on mainstream radio. And I can say that because I used to program mainstream radio. Yep. And these guys are indie, and we have a top uh, uh, top uh, 100 countdown, and that happens each and every Saturday uh, morning from six until noon with uh, Bill Springate and Walter. Uh, Walter James as well. And they're and easy uh, to tune in, people. Just go to RadioGTA.ca if you're looking for more of a mix. You're looking for 60s, 70s, go to FM108.ca. Just punch it into the URL. You're got, Boom, you're there. And as a matter of fact, um, by the time this airs, we will have played the indie country kind of from this week, but these, these are the top songs, uh, the top five at the moment in, in indie. Uh, and thank you to Walter Scott James, who hosts the show, as well as Bill Springate. Tony Prophet's Simplify My Life is a new single. Uh, we have One Ugly Cowboy, a band out of Ontario, and a song called Still Kickin'. Uh, Jade Maya from Ontario, I Will Take You Home, her new single. Steve Newsom, Symbol Things, he's from Alberta. The number one song at the moment is uh, by Jackie Guy, a tune called your shirt and Jackie is from Saskatchewan. So listen to that and listen to, of course, Bill Smith on the weekends on Radio GTA uh, from noon to six with all the commercial free new music. Um, and again, as, as they say, we uh, we keep we keep you updated on all of the things that go on in Canada and we play some damn good music and lots, long strings of it. Every day. That's so right. check it out. We're live on location. I shouldn't say live, but we're on location at the Appalachian Drink House in Georgetown, Ontario, or Halton Hills, Ontario. You can check them out on Facebook. You can also, uh, if you're local watching this, give them a call at 905 877 9888. They're at 68 Main Street North in the Moor Park Plaza. We want to thank them for allowing us to uh, invade their space while well, we're in this lockdown till the 21st. Uh, at this point anyway, and uh, Big Daddy Russ Horton, myself, Lee Lakin, Leah Lywood, want to wish you all the best for this next up-and-coming week. 
And welcome to our first show yeah, for Air, Air Radio Ra- News. Air Radio News. I think it's gone very well. And, and, and basically, it's just like our uh, community I show. I think we've done it before. I think we've done, I think it, before. We've done it before. Thanks um, for tuning in, everybody. Have yourself a fantastic week. Catch us next week for all your Canadian news and updated news right here on Air Radio News.